1937, the Italian Royal Army realized that Lancia 1ZM armored cars in service in the reconnaissance units since 1915 still employed in the Italian African colonies and in the Spanish Civil War, even if still efficient, were obsolete because they were not fast, were weakly armored, and had bad off-road driving capabilities. This led to the development of the Autoblindo Fiat Ansaldo series, of which the most prominent was the AB41. Welcome to a new Tank Encyclopedia voiced article covering the most important armored car of the Italian army during the Second World War. If you like our content, please do consider donating on Patreon or on PayPal. The funds donated go towards the beautiful illustrations that accompany all of our articles and of our videos. Every little bit helps and it is your support that keeps us going. The Italian army which was one of the first armies to use armored cars in 1912 with the Fiat Arsenale, held armored cars in high esteem for their role of long-range reconnaissance vehicles for armored divisions and support to infantry actions. The armored cars used in World War I received positive comments from the Army High Command, who were impressed by the usefulness of the new vehicles. Between 1918 and 1932, there were a number of prototypes of various armored vehicles which, however, led to nothing other than 46 Fiat 611s produced by Ansaldo with a maximum road speed of only 28 km per hour and a range of 180 km. Italian officers were not satisfied with the new armored vehicle which, during the Second Italo-Abyssinian War, received more criticism than the older Lancia 1ZM. This led the Italian army to give an order to all Italian companies for a new wheeled vehicle to replace the Lancia 1ZM, which was being used in Spain, and the Fiat 611. Around the same time, the Polizia dell'Africa Italiana, or PAI, unilaterally requested the development of an armored car for reconnaissance duties from Ansaldo, to be used in the Italian African colonies of Libya and Ethiopia, where anti colonial resistance groups were still present and light tanks could not adequately perform the long range reconnaissance role that armored cars provided. This request was also aimed to replace the old Fiat Terni Tripoli and Lancia 1ZM that arrived in Africa after 1918, which by that point had experienced 20 years of continuous service and suffered from several problems due to a lack of spare parts. The two orders from the Italian army and the Italian police in Africa were answered by the Fiat Spa and Ansaldo Consortium, which began to develop a wheeled vehicle that would meet the requirements of the Italian army and the colonial police. The feature that was most taken into consideration was the off-road driving. In fact, the vehicle used as the basis was the medium tractor model 1940, a vehicle used to tow artillery in development since 1938, but which only entered service in 1942. One of the biggest issues that had been found in the previous armored cars was the time it took to disengage from a firefight and flee, which was made harder by the narrow streets in the villages of the colonies. The problem was solved by adding another driving position on the right side of the rear of the new armored car. The steering system was then modified, allowing the front and the rear drivers to steer with all four wheels. The armament was composed of three 8mm caliber Breda Model 38 machine guns and placed, as on the Lancia armored car, two in the turret and one in the rear, on the left side of the rear driver. The engine was a Fiat Spa ABM-1 six-cylinder petrol engine giving out 78 horsepower. On May 15, 1939, the two prototypes produced, at the time called Autoblindo Mitragliarice, model 1940 or ABM-40, were presented to Benito Mussolini and the Italian army during the inauguration of the Fiat production plant in Mirafiori, Turin. Two weeks later, one of the prototypes was sent by sea to Africa Orientale Italiana, modern-day Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Somalia, where it covered 13,000 kilometers during tests. After some modifications to speed up production, even if the tests revealed that the main armament was not powerful enough, the vehicle was accepted into service in March 1940 
and ordered in a first batch of 176 units due to the imminent entry into the war. Under the name Autoblinda Model 1940, or more simply AB40. The first five vehicles were sent to the Armored Car Training Center at Pinorello in March 1941. 24 examples of the new armored car were produced with the temporary Model 1940 turret, while a prototype was created with the Model 1941 turret of the L640 light tank. The new version, called AB41, was armed with the Canone 20-65 Breda Model 1935, overcoming the lack of firepower of the AB40 and a more powerful petrol engine, the Fiat Spa ABM2 6-cylinder 88 horsepower. The modifications increased the weight from 6.8 to 7.4 tons. After a few tests, it was judged favorably by the army, which authorized its production. After a short while, the new Model 1941 turrets, which were already being produced for the L6, arrived at the assembly lines. The new engines took longer, as the assembly lines had to be modified, so it was decided to modify the AB40 armored cars by mounting the Model 1941 turret on hulls powered by the Fiat Spa ABM-1 engine. These hybrid armored cars are indistinguishable from the AB41 from the outside, and the total production number is 435, 65% of the whole AB41 production. The AB41 was the standard reconnaissance armored car of the Royal Italian Army, which used it with excellent results in the African campaign, on the Russian front, and in the Balkans from mid-1941 to September 8, 1943. After the September 1943 armistice of Kassibile, all the AB-41s were requisitioned by the Wehrmacht, which went on to reuse them in France and Germany. Some of them were given to the Esercito Nazionale Repubblicano, the National Republican Army, which was the collaborationist army of Benito Mussolini's Italian Social Republic, which was founded in September 1943 on Italian territories still under German control. In total, about 660 were produced even after the German occupation. After the war, they were still employed by the Italian police and the Italian army until 1954. The Royal Army considered the AB41 to be fundamental, so it ordered Fiat to give priority to the delivery of armored cars over light tanks. According to Fiat archives, a large number of L6 tanks were parked in the warehouses of Fiat factories for months, practically finished, but without the radio system and the optics of the cannon, because the production of these parts common to the AB41 was insufficient and priority was given to the armored cars. The crew consisted of four men. The front driver, who also operated the radio when not driving, was placed in the front. The vehicle's commander was in the turret in the middle of the vehicle, who, in addition to giving orders to the rest of the crew, had to operate the main gun and control the battlefield. The rear driver was on the left of the rear part, and the machine gunner slash radio operator was to the rear driver's right. Throughout the war, the lack of a loader for the main gun negatively affected the performance of the armored car. As aforementioned, the engine was a Fiat Spa ABM-1 six-cylinder water-cooled inline petrol engine giving out 78 horsepower in the AB-40 hull version, while in the AB-41 version, it was a Fiat Spa ABM-2 six-cylinder water-cooled inline petrol engine giving 88 horsepower, with a Zenith Type 42 TTVP carburetor housed in the back of the engine compartment. The two engines were designed by Fiat and produced by its subsidiary Spa in Turin. The second engine was chosen because the new turret, armed with the Breda gun, increased the weight of the vehicle and decreased the range and top speed. With the ABM-1 engine, the AB-41's speed on road was 75 km per hour, while the range was about 370 km. Whilst with the new engine, the speed on road was 80 km an hour, even though the maximum speed reached during the tests was 98 km an hour, and the range was increased to 400 km. There were three fuel tanks for a total of 195 liters. The main one, with 118 liters, was in the double bottom of the floor. 
The 57 litre secondary tank was mounted in front of the front driver above the steering wheel, while the 20 litres reserve tank was placed under the machine gun position in the rear. The suspension was a four-wheel drive with independent shock absorbers on each wheel, which gave excellent off-road mobility to the armoured cars. The spare wheels, placed on the sides of the hull, were left loose and free to rotate to help the vehicle to overcome obstacles. Supports for extra jerry cans were mounted at the factory on the last vehicles produced, along with a new exhaust, being able to carry up to a maximum of five or six jerry cans. But there are photos of AB-41s in Africa equipped with jerry cans attached to racks built and welded by the crews on the battlefield. The armor on the entire hull and superstructure consisted of bolted plates. This arrangement did not offer the same efficiency as a mechanically welded plate, but facilitated the replacement of an armor element in case it had to be repaired. The hull was 9mm thick, front, sides and rear, while on the turret the bolted plates reached a maximum thickness of 40mm on the front plate and 30mm on the sides and back. The wheel fenders were also armored to prevent enemy fire from piercing the tires. In general, for the tasks the armored car had to perform, the armor was more than adequate, protecting the crew from enemy infantry light weapons. The hull of the armored car had an internal structure on which the plates were bolted. At the rear of the superstructure were two armored access doors, divided into two parts that could be opened separately. The upper part had a slit so that the crew could use their personal weapons for close quarters defense. On the left was the antenna, which rested on a support at the back of the superstructure. In fact, to open the upper part of the left door, it was necessary to raise the antenna a few degrees. On the right, the horn was placed at the front, a pickaxe was placed on the right side and the exhaust pipe was placed on the rear wing. The two spare wheels were placed in two fairings on the sides of the superstructure. In the railway version, the support in the fairing allowed to attach two wheels on each side. Above the engine compartment there were two air intakes and two hatches for engine maintenance. On the back were the cooling grill and the two rear lights. On the left wall of the superstructure, in the middle, was placed the radio system model RF3M produced by Magneti Marelli, which was installed on all vehicles of the AB series from March 1941 onwards. The radio system mounted on vehicles built before March 1941 is unknown. The RF3M consisted of the transmitter and receiver placed one on top of the other. Underneath them on the floor, the power supplies were placed while the batteries were placed in the double bottom of the floor. There were two pairs of headphones and microphones, one which was used by the front driver and the second by the rear machine gunner. The mountain antenna can be lowered to 90 degrees. When hoisted up, it was 3 meters high and could reach 7 meters fully extended with a maximum range of 60 kilometers and 25 to 35 kilometers when 3 meters high. The company or platoon command armored cars also received an RF-2CA radio, also from Magneti Marelli mounted on the rear of the fighting compartment, but there were no external differences between the normal AB-41 and the command version. Apart from the frontal slit and the episcope, the front driver had in front of him the steering wheel, the dashboard, the 57 liter tank and the brake fluid tank. On his right was the gear lever with six gears, the handbrake, the intercom panel and the directional control lever which, when lowered, allowed the rear driver to take control of the vehicle. On the left, at the top, there was a crank that facilitated the rising or lowering of the radio antenna. On either side, above the wheel fairings, there was a headlight on armored hinges that were raised and lowered by the driver with two levers. Behind the driver's seat with a foldable backrest, there was the position of the vehicle commander slash gunner. The position did not have a turret basket, and the commander operated the cannon and the machine gun by the use of pedals. There were no electric generators in the turret, so the cables that connected the pedals to the weapons in the turret were the Bowden type cables, the same as on bike brakes. On the sides of the hull were the ammunition racks that occupied most of the free space on the interior sides of the superstructure. 
On the right was a large container that was used to store the crew's personal belongings and equipment, whilst fixed on the outside of the container was the support for the spare barrels for the machine guns. Behind the racks, there was additional room for a couple of small containers for equipment and three fire extinguishers, two on the left side and one on the right side. At the back were the rear driver's position on the left and the machine gunner's position on the right. Their seats were foldable and the steering wheel was secured with a butterfly screw which was easily removable to facilitate crew access and exit. Between the two seats were the dashboard, gear lever with four gears, handbrake and the directional control. The intercom panel was between the slit and the machine gun ball support. Between the two crew members and the engine compartment there were two tanks. On the right a 20 liters fuel tank and on the left one for the engine cooling water. Under the machine gunner there was the vehicle's power battery and to the right of the machine gun the headphones and the radio microphone. Behind them there was the engine compartment which was not easy to access for maintenance because it had only two access doors. Behind the engine there were the radiator and the oil tank. As aforementioned, the AB41 turret was the model 1941 developed and produced by Ansaldo for the L6-40 light tank. The one-man turret had an octagonal shape with two hatches, one for the vehicle commander on the roof and the second one on the back of the turret used to facilitate the disassembly of the main armament during maintenance operations. On the sides, the turret then had, in addition to two slits, two air intakes as the vehicle did not have fans or smoke extractors. On the roof there was a periscope for the commander next to the hatch which allowed him a partial view of the battlefield because it was impossible due to the limited space to rotate it 360 degrees. After some time it was realized that the turret had some balance problems so a counterweight was put on the back under the rear hatch. The main armament was the Canone 2065 Breda model 1935 L65 with a rate of fire of 220 rounds per minute with a by one sight produced by the San Giorgio Optics factory. The elevation was plus 18 degrees while the depression was minus 9. The Breda cannon could fire armor piercing and high explosive rounds of Italian production with a caliber of 20 by 138 millimeters but also those used by the German Flak 38 cannon and the Salzburg S18-1000 anti-tank gun, increasing the anti-tank capacity of the cannon. With the Italian armor-piercing shells, the Model 1935 cannon could penetrate a 38mm armor plate inclined at 90 degrees at 100 meters and a 30mm armored plate at 500 meters. With German Panzergranate 40 ammunition, it could penetrate 50 mm of armor inclined at 90 degrees at 100 meters and a 40 mm armored plate at 500 meters. The secondary armament consisted of two Breda Model 38 8 mm caliber machine guns, first coaxial to the cannon on the left and the second in a ball support on the rear of the vehicle. These machine guns were the vehicle version of the Breda Model 1937 medium machine gun and had a top-mounted curved box magazine with 24 rounds. The machine gun at the rear had a by one optics and could be disassembled and used in an anti-aircraft position. For the whole duration of the African campaign, the AB-41 crews used a variety of handcrafted supports for anti-aircraft machine guns. Often machine guns captured from the Allies, such as the Browning M1919 or Bren gun, or other Breda Model 1938s taken from Italian vehicles destroyed in combat were used in these mounts. From 1943 onward, an anti-aircraft support for the AB-41 was produced by Ansaldo, but very few were produced and not much is known about their use. From 1943 onwards, a smoke grenade launcher mounted on the side of the engine compartment and a box containing the smoke grenades were added on the back of the armored car. It is not clear if the last AB-41s delivered to the Royal Army were equipped with them or if only the Germans used them. The AB-41 armored car held 38 magazines of 12 rounds of 20mm ammunition for a total of 456 rounds 
and 83 magazines of 24 rounds of 8mm ammunition for a total of 1,992 rounds. As aforementioned, the magazines were placed in the white painted wooden racks on the sides of the hull. 14 20mm magazines and 40 8mm magazines were placed on the left side, together with the radio and intercom of the commander. The remaining 24 20mm and 45 8mm magazines were placed on the right side. In the one-man turret, there was no space for a loader, and it was the vehicle commander who had to load the cannon, in addition to commanding and firing the cannon. Even though it was not uncommon for one of the two drivers, when not driving, to pass the magazines to the commander to facilitate loading. The tyres used on the AB-41 were produced by the Pirelli factory in Milan, as were almost all the tyres on Italian vehicles. Pirelli produced several tyres for the 60cm rim used on the TM-40 transport vehicles and also the AB-40 series armoured cars. Three types of tyres were used for the African campaign, the most common being the Libya. There was also the Libya Reinforzato with the same dimensions but run flat, and the Reiflex introduced in 1942 for the Camionetta Fiat Spa AS42 and rarely fitted on armoured cars. For the use on continental terrain, such as Italy, the Russian steppes, France and Germany, AB-41s instead used the Pirelli Artiglio, the Artiglio Assezioni Maggiorata, and finally, from 1942 onwards, the Pirelli Sigillo Verde tires. There is photographic evidence that shows AB-series armoured cars fitted with the AS-42 specific tires and vice versa, as, due to troublesome supply lines of the Royal Army and the Republican Army, the crews were not always supplied with spare wheels. Some photographs show armoured cars with non-standard tyres of a suitable size. The AB-41 was a well-designed vehicle, but it was not without its flaws. The steering system was very delicate and forced the crews to make continuous and long overhauls to make it continuously work. The mechanism which allowed the dual drive took up a lot of space inside the vehicle, thus making it very cramped. The Model 1941 turret suffered from several problems as well. It was very tall, therefore causing problems as it was easier to spot even at long distances and for balance. This later issue was solved in the middle of 1942 with the addition of a counterweight on the back. Furthermore, it did not have a fume extractor but instead only two air intakes. Furthermore, it did not have a fume extractor, but instead only two air intakes, often causing the gunner to become intoxicated. The turret was also very narrow, making loading very difficult. The AB-41 had a one-man turret, forcing the commander to perform too many tasks, including locating targets, firing, loading the cannon and giving orders. This obviously caused many problems for the commander, whose task was made even harder by the lack of a laryngophone, and was forced to give orders through the intercom placed on the left side of the superstructure. During the war, the Italian war industry failed to provide an adequate amount of high-quality ballistic steel armor for the Italian army. In fact, the crews often complained about the armor on armored cars which in some instances, during off-road marches, cracked whilst traversing rough terrain. Although the armor was thick enough to defend the crew from light infantry weapons, making it adequate for a reconnaissance vehicle, due to the lack of suitable vehicles and the lack of organization, the Italian army often employed the armored cars as a vehicle to break the enemy's defensive lines. This caused a lot of losses, as these long-range reconnaissance vehicles were an all-too-easy target even for anti-tank rifles that could penetrate the armor of the armored cars of the AB series over 100 meters away. When having to attack enemy positions, the crews often advanced with their vehicles facing backwards, as the rear-facing machine gun provided superior offensive capabilities and the presence of the engine at the rear increased the protection for the crews, even though it made the vehicle as a whole more vulnerable. The 20-liter reserve tank was not protected by an armored bulkhead, a problem which was never solved and the risk of fire was always very high. 
Even during the use in the desert, this problem worsened because the heat emitted from the engine forced the crews to keep the doors and the hatches open to allow them to properly breathe. One interesting fact is that the crews often did not fill the reserve tank and relied on externally transported fuel tanks to avoid the risk of fire. This was it for the first part of our video on the Autoblindo 41, which covered the development and the design of the armored car. Join us next time when we will be talking about its service and about its variants. Until then, keep us in your sights.